Hey guys, I'm Alphonse. Welcome to the 11th episode of Anybody Can Code C programming series. If you'd like to take a look at the previous episodes, please use the link in the description. Today we'll be looking at nested loops. First, what are loops? Loops execute a set of statements again and again until a certain condition is met or satisfied. Now, what are nested loops? A loop within another loop is called nested loop. It could be a for loop within a for loop or a while loop within a while loop or it could be a for loop within a while loop or a combination of any loops. Today, let's take a look at few examples to better understand the working of nested loops. We are given a program to print the following pattern using nested loops. The best way to program these kind of problems is to determine the number of times the outer loop and the inner loops are executed. In this problem, we have four rows, which tells us that the outer loop should be executed four times. Now, it, now, let's determine the number of times the inner loop is executed. If you see in the first row, there are the number of stars is one, and in the second row, the number of stars is two, and it grows gradually. Likewise, if you also notice that the maximum value of i in the first row is one, and in the second row it is two, and in the third row it is three. So we are gonna use the value of i as the maximum limit for which the inner loop is executed. Let's run the program. So we are giving the uh, number of rows as four and we are able to get the output. So for this program, I have uh, coded using uh, nested for loops. The given program can also be modified using a for loop within a while loop. So I'm remo removing the for statement and I'm replacing it with the while statement. And I'm also incrementing the condition variable i. So when we are using while loop, we should not we should remember to increment the condition variable or it might lead to an infinite loop. Let's run the program. I'm giving the number of rows as four and I'm getting the same output as before. Now let's take a look at a slightly difficult problem. In this problem, we have five rows, which tells us that the number of times the outer loop should be executed is five. The value of i can be incremented one from one to five or it can be decremented from five to one. In the previous program, the pattern was gradually increasing. 
and also we made use of i to determine the number of times the inner loop was executed and so we incremented the value of i from 1 to 4 but in this program the pattern is gradually decreasing so we are going to decrement the value of i in uh, through through the loop We are getting the number of rows from the users. We are writing the uh, for loop. Since we are decreasing the for loop through each uh, iteration, so we are starting it from the maximum value. The maximum value is the uh, row which the user enters. Here we are decrementing the value of i th through each uh, loop. Now it's time to determine the number of times the inner loop should be executed. So in the first row, the number of stars is nine. And, and in the second row, the number of stars is seven. And in the third row, it, the number of stars is five and so on. So if you notice that the value of i in the first row is five. So we can print the number of stars that is nine by the formula two into one minus one sorry, 2 into i minus So now let's run the program. I'm giving the number of rows as 5. As you can see, we, we are getting the pattern, but it is not similar to the one that we have in the question. If you notice the question, in the first row, there are no spaces. And in the second row, there is a space of 1. And in this third row there is there are two spaces and so on so in order to achieve that we are going to use a count variable and I'm going to initialize it to zero because in the in the first row there are no spaces Just like the previous problem, here also we sh shouldn't forget to increment the count variable. So now let's run the program. Okay, I forgot to initialize the value of k. Okay, so the, I'm entering the number of rows as 5. And as you can see, now we are getting the same output as in the question. With this, we come to the end of this episode. In the next episode, we'll be looking at functions in C programming.
so stay tuned hey youtube how are you doing stay tuned to facebook for more awesome videos don't forget to subscribe